The man called X. He is the man who crosses the ocean as readily as you or I cross town. He is the man who travels today as you and I will travel tomorrow. He is the man who fights today's war in his unique fashion so that tomorrow's peace will make the world a neighborhood for us all. He is the man called X. Tonight, Mr. X drops in on an adventure involving some hot jewelry, a hotter steak, and an extremely hot senorita. But at the moment, he's getting a rather cold blast from his fiancée, Nancy Bessington. They're at lunch. Now, look, Ken. Do you think I like the prospect of being married to a uh, human helicopter? Nancy, I object. I've never been known to harbor in midair. But don't you realize, darling, that all this chasing around all over the world, grabbing a sandwich on the run and missing your sleep and... By golly, you're right, darling. What I need is to be completely and utterly bored. Ken. I have some friends up on Cape Cod, and they're the dullest people in the world. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, sounds like heaven. We must visit them sometime. We are going to visit them this weekend. This weekend? I have the tickets, and we're flying up this afternoon. It's all arranged. The people are expecting us, so you can't back out now. Oh, Nancy, you're an angel, but it's impossible. I, um, uh, I have to, uh, um... Yes? What do you have to do? I have to see a jeweler. Oh? About some diamonds. Oh, Ken, darling. For the chief. Chief? Yeah, just a routine inquiry. Oh, you two going steady now? Purely platonic. How long will it be? Oh, a couple of hours, I should say. Oh, then good. Then I'll fly up right after lunch. You can come up on the 4.30 plane and we'll have dinner Cape Cod. A very dull dinner. Promise? Promise. <laughs> Sir. Why, yes, yes. Uh, are you Mr. Blucher? No. Mr. Blucher is out of the store at present. That's too bad. I was advised to see him personally about uh, having a diamond reset with some smaller ones added. I'm sorry. He is not here. Do you know when he went back? I can't say oh, exactly. The, uh, the middle of the afternoon, perhaps? Perhaps. Well, as soon as he comes in, uh, have him get in touch with will you? I'll be at the Manhattan Health Club down the street a ways. In the Turkish bath. It's extremely important. For whom should Mr. Blucher inquire? The name is Thurston. Ken Thurston. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. enough for you, Mr. Thurston. Oh, Axel, this is the hottest steam room in the borough of Manhattan. There's one other customer, Mr. Thurston. Do you mind sharing the steam with him? No, send him in. Good. Don't stay in too long. Don't worry, Axel, not in this heat. Uh, is there anything you need? A clean sheet? No, no, this one's fine. Just stop back in about three minutes and sprinkle some barbecue sauce on me. <laughs> oh, sh Phew. Hello. Is that you, Mr. Thurston? Who's there? I can't see through this team. I'm Gunnar Blucher. Oh, Blucher, the diamond cutter. Glad you got my I message. I must talk to you. I'm in great trouble, Mr. Thurston. Is it all right to talk here? I imagine, sir. What's the matter? I get package in the mail this morning. What should I dropped in to see you it's about? It's from Holland. I opened it, and there are three huge diamonds. Uncut, but valuable for industrial uses. Worth millions. Well, less than ten minutes after package arrived, they came in and threatened me. They? Who's they? The man you talked to with the thick glasses. Herr Schloss and his helper. Where are the diamonds now? Schloss made me pack them up again and address the box to a jewelry store in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I get it. From there, Nazi agents will ship the diamonds back to the Reich by way of Lisbon. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. I knew, by the way, you talked in the store that you must be from Washington. So I slipped away and followed you. 
That's a long haul to get the gems through the lines to Germany. 20 miles as the crow flies, 20,000 miles by the Nazi grapevine. Will I... <coughs> Will I... <coughs> go to prison, Mr. Thurston? You'll never live to go to prison if our chum with the thick glasses finds out you've been talking to me. This calls for some prompt activity. Not in a Turkish bath. Yeah. Come on, Blucher. Yeah. <coughs> Uh-uh. The door's jammed. We must get out of here. I've had enough of this steam. Locked. Open up, Axel. Unlock this door. They must have followed me. Of course they followed you. Open up, somebody. <laughs> Axel, turn off the steam. Mr. Thurston, I'm getting faint. Come on, Blucher. Let's get our shoulders against this door. We have to break it down. Blucher. Are you all right? Luca? Excellent! <laughs> Excellent! Anyone open up this door! Hello, Mr. Thurston! Take on! You seem to be in the market for highly specialized services, Mr. Thurston. Take on! Oh, Zagon, you're a lifesaver. Unlock the door! For how much, Mr. X? How can you think of money at a time like this? Very easy. $200, perhaps. Robbery. But I'm in no position to haggle. Turn off the steam and let's get out of here. Huh. Oh, oh, well, that's better. Now get this door open, Zagar. I'm coming, Mr. Hector. Huh. There. Phew. God bless your mercenary soul. Oh, you were in a hot spot, <sighs> Mr. Egg, if you'll excuse the expression. It's lucky I happened to stop by. How... How did you happen to stop by, Zagor? Well, would Blackstone tell Houdini? After all, a man who lets his main source of income suffocate in a Turkish bus is a fool, wouldn't you say? I want to be on hand at your autopsy, Zagor. I'm sure you have a cash register for a soul. <laughs> Thank you. Where's the attendant? Bound and gagged in the closet. Ah, well, I'll be getting dressed. So I'll be making out the bill for my services. Incidentally, Zagon, did you get a look at the fellow who tried to suffocate us in the steam room? Mm, a few dollars might sharpen my recollection. It's high time you declared a dividend. Mm -hmm. Did he or did he not wear thick spectacles? Mm, I'd say he did. Good. Now we know the man we're after and... Zagon! What's the matter, Mr. X? My clothes are gone. Oh. Every stitch. My wallet and keys, identification, everything. They go. Uh oh, -uh, no, no, not me, Mr. X. When I peek, I leave the pocket. <laughs> I've got to get something to wear. <laughs> the sheet you have on is not unbecoming. <laughs> Look, Zagon, get out and scare me up some clothes because I'm catching the next plane for Argentina. of you to invite yourself along, Zagan. But I am so useful to you, Mr. X. Yes, you do make a nice deduction on my income tax. What is this wild goose we are chasing to Argentina? Why should I tell you? Oh, you might be a very well broiled steak by now if it weren't for me, Mr. X. Besides, how can I help you if, you if I don't know why we are after the man with the thick glasses? All right. Some industrial diamonds were confiscated by the Allies when we liberated Holland. Now... Our friend is trying to spirit them back to the Reich by way of Argentina. Diamonds? How much do you think they are worth? Millions when cut. Perhaps you would like to hire me on a percentage basis on this job. No fancy deals, Zagon. Cash on the line. But you are so impractical, Kugel Capital, Mr. X. Why don't you put me under contract? You agree to pay me 10% more than the highest offer from anyone else, okay? I'd be bankrupt in no time. No, Zagon. Where you're concerned, piecework is much cheaper. Uh, may I help you, sir? I'd, uh, I'd like a suite for two. Thurston's the name. Mr. Thurston? Well... I... Do, you, do you have a room for me? Well, but you're already registered. Going to be Ken Thurston, T-H-U-R-S-T-O-N? <laughs> Room 707. 
Oh, I must be someone else with the same name. Well, I, uh, I just took over from the night clerk. He says he thinks this Mr. Thurston is the important special investigator that they call Mr. X. You don't say? Yes. From Washington, D.C. Well. Where are you from, Mr. Thurston? Me? I'm from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. <laughs> a moment, we'll continue with tonight's exploit of Mr. X, starring Herbert Marshall. But first, a word from the men and women of Lockheed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lockheed Constellation is the largest, fastest, highest flying transport in use today. Fully loaded, 64 passengers, cargo, and crew of six, it is capable of flying from Chicago to New York in two hours, 47 minutes. From New York to London in 13 hours, 20 minutes. From London to Paris in 56 minutes. Now, these sample schedules are quite exciting, of course, but what makes them particularly striking is that the plane we are talking about, the four-engined Lockheed Constellation, is actually in use today. It's no manufacturer's dream. It is in use today. The Lockheed Constellation the transport that flies better than 300 miles an hour, the transport that cruises at 20,000 feet high up in the smooth upper air, the transport that operates in and out of any standard airport with room to spare, the transport, furthermore, that even on short hops of 30 minutes has been proved more economical than the ordinary two-engine airliner. This transport, the Lockheed Constellation, is flying for the Army Air Forces today. When peace comes, it will fly for you, bringing the airport in your town hours closer to any place in the nation and to lands beyond the horizon. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, remember the name. The Lockheed Constellation. The transport of tomorrow in use today. Another example of Lockheed leadership. <laughs> hunt for a fortune in uncut diamonds has led Mr. X to room 705 of the Hotel Embasadero in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Next door in room 707, another Mr. X is registered. At the present moment, Zagon Zellsmith, freelance spy and double-crosser extraordinary, is combing the room of the airsoft Mr. X, while Ken lies on his bed, staring at the ceiling and thinking out a plan of action. The sun is set, but Ken hasn't bothered to turn on the light. <laughs> Where the devil are those cigarettes? Oh. Hello? Well, what did you find, Sega? Sega. Who's this? Who's there? Darling. Well, hello. Oh, Jane. Why did you not meet me? You said you would. Oh, well, there uh, a number of things. You still love me? Love you? Of course I love you, my darling. I could no more stop loving you than I could stop breathing. Do you have a cold? Yeah, 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 yes, I'm afraid I... <clears throat> yes, I, yeah. I caught a little cold. Suppose it makes my voice sound different, huh? Very different. Oh, but then, it's no wonder you caught cold, considering where we were. Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> where we were, it's no wonder I caught cold. Um, you didn't catch cold, did you, darling? Of course not. I didn't go in. That's right, yes, you didn't go in. Dearest, we've known each other only nine hours. Hardly seems that long. No, but I know all the things you said are right and true. That's why I did exactly what you told me to. 
Oh, we were meant for each other, darling. I don't care what Uncle says. Uncle doesn't approve? Well, I'm sure he wouldn't, if he knew. Oh, he's too old to remember what it's like to be in love. All he cares about are his old beef cattle. You must try to be understanding, my darling. It, uh, it is hard to get romantic with beef cattle. There's, there's just one thing that worries me, Kane. This afternoon, after we went out to the... After we went where, dear? You know where. I, I thought you had changed somehow. It's not true, is it? Yes, I have changed. Much more than you think. Oh, darling. Wait till I press the switch on this table lamp and you'll see how much I've changed. <sighs> By heaven, you are lovely. You aren't, Mr. X. Opinions on that may differ, but I assure you that the chap who made love to you is not Ken Thurston. What are you talking about? I have a sneaking suspicion you've been getting chummy with an agent of the Nazi government. Oh, I don't believe you. Lady, you've apparently been sucked in by the oldest con game in the world. And it's a lucky thing you stumbled into the wrong hotel room or you might have you might have a real heartbreak on your hands. Oh, it's not true. He loves me. It's for you, pretending. He made love to you so he could use you for a purpose. All I want to know is what you did for him. I won't tell you. Where were you this afternoon? I don't see... Where what... did you go together? What did you do? Why should I tell you? Because I'm on your side. Because this phony Mr. X is trying to help the Fourth Reich prepare for another world war. I don't care. Yes, you do care. Because he's the type of gentleman that's sabotaging the future happiness of kids like you. Whether you live in Buenos Aires or Bridgeport. I'm in love with him. You think you are. You've only known him nine hours. In another nine hours, you might be in love with me. Tell me, what's he up to? I promise. Who's your uncle? What does he pack besides beef? Oh, I won't stay here. Now, wait a minute. Come back. Oh, well. Do you want me to catch her for you, Mr. X? I will chase her for nothing. No, Zagan. No, I, um, uh, I think we'll let her go. She may bring us some bigger game. What's with you, Zagon? Did you find anything in our neighbor's room? He must have all his valuables with him. Oh, this hand-worn necktie was the only thing worth the taking. Anything? Are you, any phone numbers? Three. On the back of an envelope. I called them all. One was a girl named Carmelita. One was a girl named Marjorita. And one was a B&B &B meatpacking house. Ah, uh, now we've got something. I don't think so. Carmelita and Marjorita on the telephone, they sound... Oh, boy. No. We'll see about them later. First, we're going to do business with the B&B &B meat packers. Oh, I hope you have your, your red points with you, Mr. X. Wild geese is all we chase is wild geese. Not this time, Zagon. I'll bet you $500 to a dozen orchids that we locate those diamonds within an hour. You interest me strangely. Uh, but orchids, they are expensive. Not down here. They grow like dandelions. Oh? All you have to do is to go out and pick them. Good. It's a bet. But you have to help me, Zagon. And you've got to work fast. Because I have a feeling that my little girlfriend is going to send the man with the thick glasses out this same road in a very few minutes. With luck, we can nab both him and the diamonds. This will undoubtedly make it necessary to bring my priceless talents into play. Since when have your talents been priceless? <laughs> Zagan, you are now a meat inspector for the Argentinian government. Oh, what's my yearly salary? You won't be around long enough to collect it. Here's what you do. When you get to the packing house, demand to inspect the beef shipment which is consigned to Lisbon, Portugal. Suppose there is no shipment to Lisbon. Well, then you win $500. Oh. But if there is a shipment for Lisbon, you'll probably see the most valuable chunk of beef in the history of the meatpacking industry. That's the storage house. You all set? 
Yeah. Do I use that gun? Now, what would a meat inspector be doing with a gun? The cows are already dead, Vega. Oh, that gun might come in handy. Don't worry. I'll be waiting right outside here in the shadows. I have a brainstorm. You go in and I wait outside in the shadow. Oh, sure. And if our Nazi friend drops by and tops my price, you'll switch over to the other side. Oh, no, Zeka. You are the meat inspector. All right. What do I say? Just bluff. There's only one watchman on duty. I'm afraid I won't put on a very professional appearance. With beefs, I don't know the front from the back. I am strictly a ground-round man myself. They're going to have implicit faith in you. But after all... And, uh, then... there is money to be made. Mr. Rick. I go. Make it fast, Vega. Hold Hola. What do you want? Hola. I am the meat inspector. I want to examine the beef you are shipping to Portugal. To Portugal? Yes. You don't have some, do you? A uh, very small shipment, see? It leaves oh. tomorrow, but it has already been inspected. Not by me. I must examine it immediately. <laughs> Everybody wants to see the meat for Portugal. Follow me. Here in the refrigeration room, 40 carcasses on the left-hand side. Uh, you will keep the door open for me. Oh, see. But do not take too long. We cannot let the cold air escape. I will hurry. In all my carry, this is the first time I ever see the pocket of a beast. Watchman! Watchman! See? What do you want? I'm a special investigator for the United States government. Here are my credentials. You may call me Mr. X. And you want to see the meat shipment to Portugal? No. I want to know if anyone else has asked to see it. See? The meat inspector is in the refrigerator examining it now. In there? See. Pardon me, please. What are you doing? The man cannot get out now. Exactly. He is not a meat inspector. He is an agent of the Nazi government. Everything he told you was a lie. And you're quite an expert on lies, aren't you, Mr. X? Mr. X? Well, huh. did you get your diamond reset, sir? No, I never had a chance to examine your entire stock, but I think I'm going to very soon. Look behind you. My men have you covered from the doorway, Mr. X. Mr. X? You mean you wish they had me covered? Unfortunately, Herr Schloss, you came here alone, and unfortunately, I think we'll have to put you on ice for a while. Um... Uh, Watchman, which of these refrigeration chambers doesn't have a jewelry concession? A uh, which? These storage rooms. Do they all lock from the outside? Oh, see, si, see, si, no windows. Well, you want to lock him up? That's the idea. Here, yeah, I help you. May I remind you, Mr. X, that we are not in your United States now. Here, my credentials are as good as yours. Well, try presenting them to one of those cold cuts. In you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> there, we fix him, yes? Watchman, I have a feeling somehow that you are too much of an eager beaver. I am? Yes, and until I know whether or not you have a swastika tattooed on your chest, maybe you'd better keep him company. Oh, I know nothing of An that. old maxim of mine, when in doubt, cool both your heels. Voila. Mr. X! Mr. X! You all right, Zagon? I am cool. Did you find the diamonds? I found a very expensive beast. What's it worth to you, Zagon? What? <laughs> Mr. X, this is no time for humor. Certainly my services should be worth a moderate fee. Oh, it's very cold in here with all this frozen cow. <laughs> Stop beefing, Zagon. Oh. $200, perhaps? Mr. X, how can you think of money at a time like this? It's a talent I picked from a friend of mine named Zell Smith. Suppose we say $200 on account and I'll let you out. Oh, whatever you say. I am pleased. All that meat and Zagon Zelsmith. Oh, Mr. X, I... I, 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 I <laughs> Do you find anything interesting? Right back here in this... Uh, is my, uh, <laughs> yeah, show me what you're talking about. This carcass that has... That, uh, <laughs> Come on, come on. What's wrong with this filet mignon, Zagon? Look. Ah, a little incision up the left flank. That's unusual. Maybe if we look inside this animal, we'll find a very valuable cut of beef. Ah, uh, okay, Zagon. Hand them over. 
Mr. S., I... Hands over. Hand over those diamonds, or you'll be cooling your heels in here for a week. Oh, thank you. Wasn't very clever of you, Zagon. Aren't you ashamed? Those little teensy, weensy rocks, I didn't think they would be worth anything at all. Yeah, I like this story. This will cost you exactly one dozen orchids. And please remember that old packing house proverb, Zagon. A diamond in the hand is worth two in the beef. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. God bless you. I'm terribly sorry. I flew up here as fast as I could. Oh, sure, sure. Now it's time to go home. Oh, Ken, the least you could have done was telephone. Oh, where are the people now? That's ditch water. I suppose you've been chasing all over, getting shot at, ruining your digestion. Nothing of the kind. It was a very calm and helpful weekend. I had some very rare steaks. Even went to a Turkish bath. <laughs> But why didn't you come up here to Cape Cod before it was time to go home? I sort of got on the wrong plane out of New York. And, uh, well, then I stopped to get these for you. Ken, a dozen orchids. Oh, why didn't you say... Oh, honey, they're heavenly. Amazing, the potency of expensive vegetation. Uh, I didn't know there was a florist in all New York with orchids like this. Oh, there isn't. I had to take a little trip to get them. Oh, Ken, you didn't go all the way to Jersey. Well, that general direction. Kiss and make up. Kiss and make up. Oh, well. Why don't I have sense enough to stay home? Marshall returns to tell you about next week's exploit of the man called X. Here is an announcement from Lockheed. Ladies and gentlemen, 24 hours a day, every day, the men and women of Lockheed are building weapons of war. The swift P-38 Lightning Fighter, the Navy's Ventura Bomber, the famous B-17 Flying Fortress, and the majestic Lockheed Constellation. Weapons of war, fighters, bombers, transports. This is the job of Lockheed today. But the time will come, a day of peace. And when it does, Lockheed's skill and Lockheed leadership will continue to build airplanes for the nation. Planes to maintain the peace. Planes to further the peace through national and international commerce. And perhaps planes to provide you and your family with swift transportation to the vacations of peace. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Lockheed is a war plant. Deadly, serious, efficient. But someday it will be a peace plant. A plant that will help endow the post-war years with security and pleasure for you and all America. Now, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Next week, the ancient city of Athens. In a story which might well be called the Grease Spot, if you'll forgive me. A story in which Mr. X tries to skin the Trojan horse with the aid, naturally, of a beautiful and seductive young lady. So be with us, won't you, when next I return, as the man called X. Good night. The man called X is presented by the Lockheed Aircraft Corporation.